Welcome to the best debate in the universe. Every debate in the universe from false flags to douchebags. With over 2 million downloads, I'm your host, Maddox. With me is Mikey Boltz, the audio engineer. Hello. And as always, my first hand on staff moderator, Rucka Rucka Ali. Hello. Welcome back to the show. We're carrying a great legacy from last week. The biggest douchebag in the universe. That's what we're going to discuss. We had a rousing debate last time, and we have uh, we have the results. Oh. But first, I want to introduce our guest this week. We're honored to have Mark and Draco. Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mark and Draco is a screenwriter. He's a comic book writer and a New York Times bestseller. Mark has written for DC's Manhunter, Torso, Batwoman, as well as Wonder Woman 77, and one of my personal favorite projects, Love is Love, which was a commemorative, it was a, a graphic novel. Yeah, it was a 144-page uh, anthology uh, with one- and two-page uh, contributions by artists, comic book artists, writers, uh, normal people, actors, directors, comedians, to raise money for the victims of the Pulse Massacre which, in Orlando, which is coming up on its first anniversary, June 13th of this year. Yeah, and it's an amazing, amazing project. So many great names. I have some of them here, uh, which I'm sure you could do a better job of listing them. But uh, we, uh, everyone from Brian Michael Bendis, uh, Gail Simone, Grant Morrison, Paul Denny, Jim Lee, Scott Snyder, and even J.K. Rowling was yeah, involved in yeah, the project. Yeah, she, um, she, we reached out to her, and she allowed us, she was very gracious, and allowed us a permission to use a quote from one of the Harry Potter books. And uh, Jim Lee, uh, the co-publisher of DC Comics and probably the most popular comic artist in America, uh, did an illustration of Harry, Hermione, Ron, and Dumbledore raising their wands in remembrance of the people that were killed and injured. Yeah, wow. and we, um, we just donated over $170,000 to the victims uh, charity. Wow, yeah. $170,000 to the victims of the charity. That is fantastic. All the proceeds of the sales were donated, is that 100%, correct? 100%, 100% in the book. We're going to keep the book in print in perpetuity. Um, starting with the fifth printing, we're going to be doing a different charity every year. And the charity for 2017, 2018 is the Trevor Project, which is a, a suicide hotline for uh, LGBT children and teens who are questioning. It's a great charity. And uh, yeah, and we, we, we're setting up deals to have foreign editions translated. And uh, it really took on a life of its own. Um, if it's the only thing I'm known for in my obituary, I'll be very proud because it was nice in this how divisive and shitty the world is right now to have all these disparate people come together and so generously give of their time to have this project that's going to outlive me. We're, you know, like we didn't think in our wildest dreams it would be as successful as it was. So hugely successful, and it's still in print. You can order it at Amazon.com. You can order it, if you order it digitally. There's 20 pages of extra material that aren't in the print edition, and uh, you can also order the the actual comic book edition from your local comic book store. And please do. Every bit goes to charity. And uh, a little bit of a warning though: don't read it in public because you will ugly cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really powerful book, but it's also very inspirational and very hopeful as well. Yeah, thank you so much for writing it. And you guys, I cannot overstate how important it is that all the proceeds are being donated 100%, which a lot of charities, they don't even donate 100%. Most charities, uh, at best, will do 80%. No, lucky, we were lucky because we also had, in addition, the, the, the day after the massacre happened, I just kind of, I was a child of the 80s and grew up with We Are the World and, right. and Live Aid and Band-Aid and all that stuff. And my reaction was, let's do something. So I Facebook messaged, yeah. let's do something. And then I had 80 people say, let's do what we're in so DC Comics uh, allowed us use of their characters in, certain, in, in the book and uh, IDW co-published co-pub uh, it with editorial assistance from DC one of DC's best editors a guy named Jamie Rich and one of uh, IDW Publishing's editors Sarah Gatos volunteered their time and they both edited about 15 projects a month so they were doing this above and beyond that everybody it really is the book is called Love is Love and it really is pure love everybody donated everything from the paper the printing the editorial everything was donated because um, we just felt like you know, give back. It's easy to write a check to a charity and then compartmentalize that and forget about it. But right. having this thing that you can revisit and, you know, I, I consider the tragedy, yes, it was an LGBT tragedy, but it was a human tragedy. Of that course. was the thing that was most important to me, that this this transcended any specific minority group and just became this thing that it should hurt for a long time. The moment we aren't, we don't ache when we think about this is the moment we need to reboot and need the comet to hit the planet and get rid of us because right. uh, we need to we need to be, keep up with these things. Well, it is a it is a fantastic project. We'll link to it on the website. Love is love, and you did all the talk show circuits mm -hmm. and. Uh, oh, can I add one more thing? Yeah, please. Uh, the weekend Memorial Day weekend, May twenty fifth through twenty eighth, uh, is MegaCon, which is a big comic con in Orlando. And that Friday night, the twenty sixth at seven thirty in Orlando, you can check the MegaCon website for this. Uh, we're doing a, a cocktail party uh, with where you 
can meet 25 or 30 of the actual creators, get a limited edition print by classic comic book artist George Perez, and you can see all the art that we're on display because on the, the next day, on that Saturday, we will be auctioning off the art uh, live and online to donate those proceeds to charity as well. So if you're going to be in Orlando that weekend and you want to go to a good cause, come to this cocktail party. There'll be some celebrity guests we haven't announced yet. There'll be at least 25 creators. There'll be all this original art, and it goes to a good cause, and there'll be booze, so booze and food. So. Fantastic, and you will be there too. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And it, what's it called, Megacon? Megacon, M-E-G-A-C-O-N. It's a huge convention in Orlando. It's also got other great stuff. They're doing a, uh, at the con, they're doing a Rocky Horror Picture Show cast reunion. Tim uh, Curry will be there along with all the cast except wow. Susan Sarandon, I believe. And uh, yeah, Stan Lee will be there and he's he's winding down his appearances and conventions as he's getting a little bit older. So uh, there's, it's going to be a great pop culture event and also, also with the auction and stuff, it's a way to further give back. Very cool. You heard it here. If anyone in Florida, which by the way, Rucka just got back from Florida. He was yeah. there for Playlist Live. Oh, yeah. Rucka, you want to talk about that? How was Playlist? It was not really my scene. Uh, a lot of uh, fuck boys there. <laughs> That's why I didn't go. Yeah. Mikey doesn't want the competition. Yeah. Well, he, he was holding it down for uh, Fuck Boy LA. He didn't have time yeah. to go. I've yeah. been to that party. Fuck Boy LA. I, I think we're thinking t- talking entirely different Mark, things. these are different yeah. parties, oh, okay. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, for now. Yeah. Well, so I, I play this live for those who don't know. It's kind of like VidCon, but it's in mm-hmm. Florida. And VidCon is super weird. Have you ever been, Mark? I don't know what that is. Oh, good. Um, it is, It's kind of like a YouTube convention, YouTube and new media and Snapchat and uh, Vine and all that. And it's it's nothing but a sea of like four, 13 and 14 year old girls and floppy haired British boys. And the girls lose their fucking minds when these kids come on. And I, I, I look to see like it's Beatle mania. These girls are screaming and crying and fainting. And I look to see who they're screaming at. And it's a boy I've never seen or heard of. So the parking lot is full of people who are on the registry, right? Oh, uh, no, it's just, it's it's actually, so I was looking around because I have a is pretty it, keen yeah, uh, like, pedo that, sensor. Is, yeah. yeah, I have, I wrote an article a long time ago. <laughs> it's a keen pedo sensor. Yeah, it's a keen pedo sensor, Mikey. You watch it. That should, be your, that should be your it. drag name, keen pedo sensor. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote an article a long time ago about something I call the pedo smile, uh, which I think I can tell, you know, based on based on the type of smile someone has, you can tell, I think. And so I wrote this article kind of like in jest, and because uh, I looked at a bunch of pictures of, of pedophiles, seeing, well, is there that'll something... be good? That'll be good when the FBI raids your house and looks at your registry and sees, oh, <laughs> pedophile portraiture. Oh, you're oh, you're allowed to look at pictures of pedophiles all day long. That's because mm-hmm. I'm that's a, that's what I am. I'm a criminal investigator. That's okay. what I do, Mark. I, I solve crimes. Okay. That's I wonder if there are people who look at pedophiles like as a fetish, like yeah. get off on pedophiles, like, side like the meta ness of it. Yeah, they're called uh, idiot men who who watch it. Like every every single time a teacher gets arrested for pedophilia, mm-hmm. they're like, "Oh man, that kid's so lucky." He- she he fucked a teacher. It's like yeah, but uh, you know this is uh, it's pedophilia, and that's crazy too. Because even though you know we 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 want to high five our sons when they sleep with a, a hot old teacher, it, it's it's still rape, and that still fucks these kids up in a huge yeah. way. No matter it's how statutory when rape. you're 14 and a 40 year old sleeps with you, not cool, regardless of the gender. Right, because there's something not fully baked about your mind at that yeah. age. It, oh, it warps you. Oh, absolutely, if absolutely. It, if it does it too, if you wouldn't be okay with it happening to a young girl you shouldn't be okay with it happening to a young guy either in in general a lot of guys who are getting laid when they're like 12 a lot of these guys end up in rehab just because like they never learn like about boundaries and like right. how to not get what you want right away right there was even a, a reddit post one time where someone said hey uh this is a question to anyone who has had sex with their teacher when they were younger how was it what was the experience like and how do you feel about it now and al- almost unanimously all of them were like yeah, it totally fucked me up. This woman took advantage of me. I wasn't ready for it. Um, especially the kid, the kid who explained it, like this kid, he was like uh, 16, 17 years old who had sex with his teacher who was, I think, 28, 29 years old. He said that she had the body of a woman. And he said he said it freaked him out. He said he wasn't experienced with that. He had no idea what it was. He had no idea what to expect. And it, it fucked with him a little bit. Well, that's the thing that people don't get. And God, this has become really dark. But the thing that people don't get is when a guy gets an erection, that doesn't mean you're emotionally into it. That can right. be a physical reaction. Sure. So there's there there can there can actually be be rape on that's why so many men don't report it because if they do come, they think, oh, I must have liked it. It's like, no, 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 no. That's just a physical reaction. Right. It's totally misunderstood. I think that uh, boners have a life of their own sometimes. But moving on from that from that delightful topic, we should talk about last week's debate. All right. We debated for the first time ever the biggest douchebag in the universe. And all four of us, we had a guest, Jesse P.S. from Pot Awful. Uh, all the way from New York, who brought in Bill Nye as his contender. 
and the wonderful Rucka Rucka Ali brought in Gandhi. Yeah. Which we got a lot of voicemail about. We're going to talk oh, about in just a minute. It's not what you expect, uh, Rucka. I think you'll, uh, you'll like some of these. And then Mikey brought in Peyton Manning. Yeah. And then me. Bono. You, oh, I was going to say, you brought yourself no, in. No. Oh, uh, yeah. The real creative dipshit fans. Uh, I saw it a billion, a fucking mile away. All right. Mm-hmm. Weeks ago, I saw you idiots in the comment section. Hey, man, I'm sorry, you put yourself on the list. Uh. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> the fucking lamest, most unoriginal dipshit joke. And guess what? Don't you, as a, as a commenter, just just scan the comments and see if anyone else made your same dipshit joke? Because everyone joke. fucking did. Was it a joke? Yeah, it's a joke, Rucka. Uh, <laughs> funny guy. Yeah, it's a real shitty joke. Wrong! No, it's not wrong. Mark? <laughs> starting this episode over. M- Mikey, delete this episode. Cutting it. <laughs> but I do have the voting here. Coming at number four, Mikey, Peyton Manning. Well, you know, they. I didn't have that good of an argument. I understand, but he is a douche. He is a douche. Yeah. I, I was still thinking of Tom Brady when he said Pey- Peyton Manning. Oh, I was. that's who I was thinking of, too. I thinking and I was that. like, yeah, of course he's a douche. Yeah, he's a huge douche. Peyton Manning is the guy with the giant forehead. The five head, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I mean, He I'm, looks like he should be in a touring company of Lil Abner. Can you see him like overalls, like dancing with like, yeah. a, a pitchfork? He looks like he's as dumb as a box of turnips. Yeah, if you put a, some overalls on him and a pitchfork. Yeah. Well, anyway, fourth place, <laughs> Peyton Manning. He is a douche, though, Mikey. Yeah, I'll kill it this week. You'll Okay, you'll kill it. With the, we'll see. We'll see, because mm-hmm. we're going to have another debate. And then, Gandhi. Yeah. Yeah. And then coming in at number one, the biggest douchebag in the universe, Bono from U2. Yeah. That's right. Bono. I would, I would accept that. Yeah. He's I ha- why, I, why don't you like Bono? Uh, well, I used to love U2. I was a teen, I was you know what? 12 or 13 when War and all those great albums came out. And then I was working in a movie theater when a little documentary came out called Rattle and Hum. And, you know, Bono's always about giving back to people and being so charitable and being like, oh, I'll wash the pores f- f- feet with my hair and I'll eat dirt and I'll... S- Bullshit. I had to walk up and down the aisle of the theater selling posters and t-shirts for that. And I'm like, oh, these must be going to charity. Nope. And his whole red thing with the gap. He's a... F- fucking hypocrite yeah. he has his own private jet fleet sure. he makes a bazillion dollars and i don't begrudge people being successful he's earned that money obviously by writing a lot of music and stuff but you know what happened to jk rowling when she made her first billion she wasn't a billionaire anymore because she instantly gave half of it away yeah he's you know i would love to see his tax returns and see how much he actually gives to charity because it's really easy to talk the talk i don't believe he walks the walk well the way that he does charity and this kind of pisses me off with all celebrity mm-hmm. charity is that they're doing it in a way that makes them look good. It's about their vanity first. So the red campaign is is luxury brands mostly. You know, I think Nike had a red sneaker, mm-hmm. Apple had a red pro like a red iPhone or an iPad or something like that. And mm-hmm. then the, I mean, they, who's buying these products? Well, and when billionaires ask me to give money, I'm like, how much are you giving? To, you know, how how much are you giving? Because there are celebrities who do really great charitable work, but you don't know about any of them. And the only and when charity when celebrities do call attention to a charity, it, it, it with themselves, the good ones are doing it to bring attention to the charity not about them you know like elizabeth taylor for the aids foundation yeah. stuff she did she did that because nobody else was that wasn't about improving her image so many of these celebrities feel like they have publicists saying do this this is going to look good bill gates bill gates very charitable bill gates the, real deal. Yeah, the real, real deal the real deal absolutely yeah i mean he's he, and the reason bill gates works is because he's such a dork yeah like he's he's not even cool enough to embezzle money and you know spend it on he doesn't have anything to spend it on he's the richest guy in the yeah. world buy it buy a new fucking shirt Stop wearing that dopey sweater. Get some designer glasses. <laughs> Stop going to like the sunglasses hut for your glasses, dude. Yeah, yeah. Buy something cool for once. Fuck. Uh, that's some, one guy I wish would steal a little bit. What are some of the things you've done to help Africa? Not, no. <laughs> you know what, Rucka? Not much. No? All right. Oh. Not much. But I'm not claiming to. I'm not claiming. That's a big difference. Oh. I'm not claiming to. Although, although, you know, this is a little bit of trivia for for Maddox, Maddox trivia. Well, the Mad Mad Heads. <laughs> so this Get is for ready. you. This is just for, for me. This is just for me. My whole trivia. crown. My crown and cape get up came from the Hurricane Katrina event where I decided to donate some of the proceeds, not 100%, some, some of, the, of proceeds. the proceeds from my t-shirts from my online store to Hurricane Katrina. And I raised something like, uh, I don't know, like $4,000, something like that. And then I made this big song and dance about how magnanimous I am, about how generous I am, and how I'm the best person. And I photoshopped myself. There's this old... Um, portrait uh, from the renaissance era of the of a pope with people waiting in line to to kiss his hand and i said i'm gonna go on a national hand kissing tour and then i did and i and then i bought went out and i bought a 400 hundred dollar cape 
and a bunch of crowns. And to this day, See, that four hundred dollars probably could have helped some of those Katrina people. Yeah, you know what? This was after the fact, <laughs> though, uh, Mark. Everyone was helped already, so oh, it was okay, yeah, it okay. was done. Yeah, this was this came yeah this came after. So anyway, that's whole that's where the whole crown and cape getup came from because I'm so magnanimous. Mm-hmm. I, I, I went around to have people kiss my hand. For I being, just thought you liked imperial margarine. <laughs> But anyway, moving on from that trivia, I got some uh, voicemail from last week. Uh, listen to this. This is about, um, we had a caller, Mark, a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. who said, and uh, maybe you've heard of this rumor, that John Wayne was gay, closeted, and his grandma's friend walked in on John Wayne blowing his grandma's friend, and then they got a divorce. And we've had so many different rumors coming in since then. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's another one. Listen to this one. It's about Bono. Oh, my God, Maddox. I'm so glad you're talking about Bono and his eye condition that he has. Because, look, I know you you said you think it's bullshit and all that, but I'm telling you, it's absolutely true. And here's how I know. So, my friend has this grandmother who passed away several years ago. But um, back in, like, the, uh, back in the uh, uh, early 80s, around the time that U2 was getting big, uh, that's when her, uh, she and her husband were going through some uh, hard time, and they ended up getting divorced uh, because her husband was cheating on her. Turns out that uh, she uh, walked into the bedroom, and there was her husband getting his dick sucked uh, by none other than Bono. So she Bono. goes, it's oh, the, my kind God, of the exact I can same never listen to you with or without you again. <laughs> well, that really startled her husband, who in turn came in Bono's eye, just lost all control and just just shot buckets of cum right in Bono's eye. <laughs> so now Bono has to wear special sunglasses because there's still bits of cum in his eye. Wah, and, wah. Um, and Turn this douchebag like, uh, off. Terrible. This guy now goes to my list. He's your, he's your douchebag of the week, huh? He might be. Yeah? Because he can't even tell a story quickly. It was like listening to my father explain something. I'm like, I just want to shake him. I was like, get to the point! Yeah, well, Bono got cum in his eyes. That's the point. Yeah. That's And that's why he wears the glasses. He supposedly has some eye condition where bright lights bother him. Well, he's, it's, it's his own reflection blinds him. Yeah. The glory of his own beauty. Oh, he'd, he'd have gone blind a long time ago if that was the case. I'm sure that guy looks in the mirror every day. I mean, I do too, but... Uh, here's, a, here's another caller. Listen to this guy. I just love how hypocritical Maddox is when he's sitting there... You know, trying to defend that piece of shit Gandhi um, by talking about how great it was that he was, you know, like he practiced civil disobedience. While at the same time, Mm -hmm. I have a shirt that I bought from Maddox's store like 10 years ago that has a picture of a cop beating a pedestrian. And it says, civil disobedience is still disobedience. Ooh. Maddox, go fuck yourself. Rucka and Mikey, yeah. you guys are okay. Except for oh, Mikey. Yeah. Mikey's kind of a douche. <laughs> but, yeah, Rucka, <laughs> What did he say at the end? He's like, except for Mikey, Mikey's a douche. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Okay, first of all, this dipshit, all mm-hmm. right? He's. He, do you guys understand what satire is? I mean, yeah. Mark, I know you do. But but do you guys understand? Like I have this shirt that says "Civil disobedience is still disobedience," and there's a cop raising a baton about to strike a woman, and her, her hand is up to defend yeah. herself. Right? It's satire, guys. Do you understand the message of that shirt? Well, it's like it's like the um the South Park movie. So those guys are so good at satire that people really thought they were homophobic and racist, and people were like, oh yeah, they were so good at you know. It goes back to now. We're gonna have a little bit of a history lesson. This might be a little pretentious for your show, but. In, in the in the 1700s, Jonathan Swift wrote a, a little thing called yeah. A Modest Proposal, and it was people were talking about how poor they were, and he suggested that you have babies to cook them, because babies were really tasty, and he wrote this, and it was printed as a pamphlet, and people believed it, but it's satire, right. and, the, and I blame our education system in this country, because new irony and satire don't exist anymore. People are so literal now, and, and in addition to being literal, they use the word literally incorrectly. They now use literally to mean figuratively, and that's becoming an accepted definition. We are becoming so stupid that I really just want to go to an island with my dog and some henry cavill movies and live the rest of my life yeah the guys the message of that shirt isn't that cops should beat people for civil disobedience no. dipshits but uh I, before we move on to the next call i do want to mention that that guy is that's right douchebag of the week Ooh, asshole um here's a call here's a caller we haven't heard from in a while it's the drawling aussie hey mate drawling aussie here so first of all last episode you got upset that the questions at trivia aren't important enough. 
There's a good reason for that. It's trivia. The questions are trivial. You fucking cash you. You should be happy that they're trivial because if they're important questions, you know, for people with degrees, you'd fail at every one of them. Secondly, I just wanted to say I'm happy to hear that you haven't sent my shirt out yet. I, I think it's really cool that you held it back so that you could send a copy of your new book with it. Cheers, mate. Now he's uh, upgraded his his free T-shirt to a free book as well. Mm -hmm. I owe that guy a T-shirt because he correctly guessed my opinion on several debates. There you go. Yeah. And it's been six months? Uh, It's just a couple months, I think. A couple months. A couple weeks, I think. Uh, But yeah, you'll get your shirt. You'll get your shirt, Drawling Aussie. And he always calls me a food. A food. Like this, uh, in this voicemail, he just called me a cashew. He used to call me uh, a nugget was the first thing he called me. He called me a nugget. That could be a turd. uh, It could be a gold. Could be a piece of gold. Oh, I don't think okay, so. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it is. It gold. could be a gold-plated turd it's, nugget. It's a gold-plated turd nugget. That mm-hmm. sounds like a country song. It is. You about, wouldn't take a gold-plated turd nugget if I gave you one right now. You wouldn't take it. Depends on how thick the gold was. If it was a dusting, if it was like if it was like a cheap like Jared's jewelry that gives turns your neck green. No, yeah. but if it was like encrusted in gold, encrusted, yeah. If it was like a peanut M M&M, and M, yeah. And the gold was the chocolate, and the turd yeah. was the yeah, peanut. Yeah. yeah, I'd take that. All right, that's me. I'm a gold. Oh, oh, that's I'm, you. I'm a gold nugget. That's me. <laughs> yeah, you're a tur- you're Without, a gold encrusted the- <laughs> turd nugget. The turd is the operative word, not the gold. All right, guys, having having a good time beating up old Maddox, magnanimous Maddox. That's me. You were beating up old Maddox in the shower this morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, here's another call. This one, uh, this one, uh, is a call about Gandhi. Raka, listen to this guy. You fucking pretentious fucking cuck. Okay, so you write a book about, like, shitting on kids and then, like, saying, uh, telling everyone to fuck whales and fuck all the good shit in life, and then you go and shit on Rucka for, like, not liking Gandhi because, oh, he's some humanitarian, I gotta defend him, oh, he's a great guy, oh, fuck whales and fuck children, though, right? Fuck everything else, but you only gotta stick to these humanitarians. Gandhi was a fucking pervert. He used to sleep next to underage, undressed girls to prove his so-called celibacy. But you know what? He's just a fucking pervert. He's the biggest fucking douchebag out there. I bet all these humanitarians are fucking douchebags. They're all just wanking themselves off because, oh, look at me. I'm so moral. Fuck that. Love you guys. Please yeah. marry me. Wow. <laughs> wow. I didn't know Steve Bannon was a listener. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, did, so, he, did he call you guys cucks? He started out with cucks. Anybody yeah. that uses that word is a fucking idiot. Yeah, that's they the, are. that word is like yeah. turnt and 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 woke. It's <laughs> fake. It's fake slang you're trying to force upon us. It's like new coke. It doesn't work. It sucks. Make it go the fuck away. You mean new call co- me a new- cock or call me something real. Don't call me a cuck. It's like non-alcoholic beer. Commit you dickhead. <laughs> fuck. Uh, my biggest problem with the, with the word is that uh, people use it like. Like it's the uh, you know the forefront of linguistic creativity. Like well, no it, one knows that it's from cuckold and what the word cuckold means. They're, right? They're just. It, I, I made a video. I made a video about this, Mark, on my YouTube channel mm-hmm. about. I said you don't know what a cuck is, and in it I described the origin of the word cuck and what it means, and it triggered so many people because I dared Trigger. suggest that it's a sexual fetish that some people are into, and guess who those people are? Guess who the number one states that search for cuckold porn the most is. The Bible Belt, the red states. Of course. Well, that's because all the crazy snake handlers who speak in tongues and clog dance on Sunday all think they're oppressed victims. So, of course, they get off on fantasies of catching their wife cheating on them because most of them can't get it up because they're drinking Mountain Dew and watching wrestling and can't, can't, don't have any circulation to their little tiny dicks. <laughs> Shots fired, but I want to talk about. I well, to, I was, I was, I wasn't angry when I got here. What is this fucking show? It, it, this is what it does. Wow, I mean, it puts people in a bad mood. Uh, <laughs> fifty episodes, guys. Fifty Woo! episodes. Yay. Yeah, it's our big fiftieth episode. Yep, take that, you cucks. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, so I do want to talk about Gandhi for a second, though. He's uh-huh. like, uh, Gandhi was a piece of shit and he's racist. So I did a little research, okay? <sighs> Gandhi said some shitty things about black people. He was born in the 1800s. Oh, there was a racist person from the 1800s? Call the news. Oh, no. A Gandhi- racist person who was educated by the imperialist Brits who settled India. Yeah. So let's let's put things into context. You the know, racist it, imperial yeah. Brits. So so there was a guy from the 1800s. Oh, no, he was a little bit racist. And by the way, he wasn't a slave owner like our founding fathers were. You guys get off your fucking high horses. He didn't horses. rape his slaves like Thomas Jefferson did. 
Thomas Jefferson now. No, I, they've they've retrofit that that he had a lovely relationship with Sally Hemings. If you're owning someone that you're, if you own someone you're fucking, there's no consent. Hmm, that's a good. That's a that's a pretty solid argument, I think. If you own somebody, you they can't consent. No. Wow, that's really fucked up. So. Anyway, oh, we just learned. Get so much hate mail. <laughs> so, so Gandhi, I did, and then I did research about the pedophilia thing, and you know the racist thing. So he called uh, black people uh, kaffirs. Ka- kaffirs. Yeah, that that word is um, a word you don't want to use in South Africa. Yeah, I I had heard that word in Lethal Weapon Two of all things because it was the the apartheid version. Right. And I asked some guys I met from South Africa that word, and I said, "What is this? Is this word really bad?" And they, their face, they drained the blood. They're like, "You you you can get killed for saying that word to black people in South Africa. It it, it makes." The, it's like the N word cubed, apparently. So uh, yeah, it, it, it's basically like the N word, and he was saying that in the eighteen mm. hundreds. Oh wow, congratulations, you guys! You guys really got Gandhi for being uh, kind of racist in the eighteen hundreds. Good job. And then the other thing is the pet is the uh, weird sexual thing. Now Gandhi did have like some weird sexual things going. Who on. doesn't? Well, who who doesn't? Go. I mean, if we, if we put a, a microscope on anybody on any particular day of their sex life, they would all look like we're we're crazy. Not me. I'm super normal. <laughs> Three knuckles deep, right? <laughs> yeah. Perfectly normal. That's normal. Um, I got another call. Uh, this one uh, also about what uh, Rucka said about Little Caesars last time. So Rucka. Oh, yeah. oh this is your. Oh, wow. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so Rucka. Yeah. Rucka used to work for Little Caesars a yes. long time ago. And, and uh, he talked about what a shitty uh, corporation they were. And how they spy on their employees and that sort of thing, like right? That they put up cameras everywhere. They put up. Well, a lot of companies have cameras in their store, but like specifically, they called me down to their headquarters downtown. Like this was a, like a forty-minute drive away to go, and like basically KGB'd me into like confessing that I left through the back door one day. When like literally, literally, but this is literally this is the correct usage. The the key was not left for me by my superiors. I did not have the key to lock up, so I locked up from inside and left out the back through the back door with I was the assistant manager and Tim, the black man, don't tell Gandhi, the black man uh <laughs> working beneath me, uh left out with the back door with me and I think they thought he was in charge and they were just looking for an excuse to uh fire the black man if you ask me. So It's unbelievable. They they can't they were surprised when I got there and I was like, "Oh no, I was in charge. What's up?" Anyway, they uh, they gave me a lot of shit for leaving out the back door. They thought uh, they thought it's unsafe because someone might try to break in. It so, could happen because you know yeah. all those little Caesars have millions of dollars of cash on hand. Oh yeah, yeah. And, it's like uh, the donut shop in Boogie Nights. How does he open a uh, an audio store with the donut shop money? Mm-hmm. What it's like? Uh, what is it like? Five dollar take and bake. What is it? Uh, there's five dollar hot and sloppy. Hot and sloppy. <laughs> hot and sloppy. Oh, yeah. Well, here's I, 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 I have that movie on beta. Yeah. And uh, Tim, if you're listening, Tim, uh, my employee or my inferior from Little Caesars, we'd like to hear your side, uh, how you recall the events of that night. So please call in. Thank you. Uh, well, here's a caller who wanted to talk about uh, Rucka's Little Caesar experience a little bit. Listen to this. Rucka, what the fuck is your deal? You're always railing against government and shit. But while you exalt the greatness and the magnanimous corporations that always look after you, but then you turn around and you call Little Caesars or corporation a fascist piece of shit regime, which, granted, they may be a fascist piece of shit corporation, but guess what? That's how all big corporations are, you fucking idiot. What the hell did you expect? (laughs) Jesus Christ, you're so dead. Go fuck yourself. Wow. Well, and Man. Sean Hannity listens to the show. Wow. Yeah, thank you, Sean Hannity. Big, big Little Caesars fans. Yeah. I, I said they're a shitty company. People can run a company badly. Yeah. That guy says they're all bad. Um, fascist regime. Fa- yeah. Uh, you, 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 but you did call it a fascist regime. That was a No, I didn't. Right? Didn't you? I don't remember mm. saying that. Yeah. Hey, speaking of fascists, uh, my mom called. Oh, Here, no. <laughs> here she is. <laughs> oh, hello, Maddox. This is your mother again. I... I'm so glad you brought up Bono this week. I, Bono. I've had this on my mind for a very long time, and I'm, I finally have a reason to talk about it. I, I had a friend many years ago who, uh, she had to get a divorce from her husband because she caught him <laughs> cheating on her. And the story goes that she walked into a room and caught her husband getting for an issue from none other than Bono of you 2s This it is very heartbreaking because I you know how much 
I am a fan of you twos. They are the greatest, most wonderful music sensation. The greatest since the Beatles. Glad to get this story off of my chest, but I must go now. I am currently at Olive Garden, enjoying an 899 early lunch duo special. That's right, Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. <laughs> Goodbye. Does she have her own Greek underscoring wherever she goes? I've never heard that kind of music at the Olive Garden. I felt like Lainey Kazan was going to come out and squirt Windex on me or something. Yeah, my wow. mom's always listening to her uh, ethnic music when she calls. She's got, really her, she, loud. She's got her, her hype man behind her with Greek music on a, on a boombox. Yeah. Um, Opa. Here's, here's another call from... Uh, where'd Matthew McConaughey about Gandhi? Listen to a uh, little-known fact about Gandhi is between photographs, he wore a tap-out T-shirt. <laughs> Uh, he's bolstering your case, Rucka, saying that he wore tap-out shirts in between photos. Yeah. Um, and here's one last one uh, about the new Mario Kart game and a guy's prediction on which vehicle I'd choose. Hey, Maddox. Um, I heard that uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe came out with all of the DLC for, uh, from the original and the Switch. Um, I, 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 I bet you're going to be driving the uh, Mercedes car. <laughs> 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 yeah, maybe I will. Ah, shit. Idiot. You showed him. Yeah. Maybe I will. Yeah, maybe I will drive the Mercedes. What's wrong with Mar- I can't even pick a Mercedes in a video game. No. No. Because of the stereotype? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It doesn't have to be white. It's got to be rose gold. <laughs> okay. Well, guys, we should move on to the debate this week. We're going to continue the thread from last week of trying to find the biggest douchebag in the universe. Joining me, as always, is my first hand-on-staff moderator, Rucka Rucka Ali. Let's hear his buzzer. And Mark Andreco, let's hear yours. Wrong! And here's Mikey Bolts. Still, it's delicate and sweet like you. <laughs> yes. All right. That's mine. That's mine this week. All right. Mikey just has a very delightful ding. Mm-hmm. There, there you go. go. There's uh, there's Mikey Bolts. If you hear any of these buzzers during the debate, or dings... That means that I said something that they disagree with or they just want to chime in. But moving on, first up, Mikey, mm-hmm. who's your douchebag pick for the biggest douchebag in the universe? All right. So for this week, I'm going with Miles Teller, the mm-hmm. uh, guy from uh, Whiplash and Mr. Fantastic, which is just what he needed for his ego, uh, was to be cast as Mr. Fantastic in the Fantastic Four, which was fantastic if you saw it. It was the most fantastic fucking... You liked it. <sighs> no. It okay. was it was it was shit. Yeah. It was uh, front to back. It was a green screen romp fest. It was awful. It was a four percent on Rotten Tomato, and I think Jack and Jill got five. So uh, wow. fuck Miles Teller. Fuck so, everyone involved with making that movie. It was such a like I've I'm a, I've got something on the side. So this is just what we're doing in the meantime type movie. And um, fuck Miles Teller because the bald he's just, guy. Uh, That's J.K. Simmons. Oh, I'm so, sorry. I'm who is sorry. This guy? Miles Teller's the drummer guy. Oh, the kid. The kid. Oh, yeah. oh sorry. the kid no, from, from uh, Whiplash. Yeah. yeah. Which, by the way, they ripped me off. Whiplash. The wow. whole, the whole, oh. uh, the thesis of Whiplash, yeah, is the same thesis of my second book, which is the most dangerous words you can tell someone is "good job." You tell a kid "good job" and they stop trying. Like you never heard someone else say that. No, I he's, I, he's I, never I, heard anyone say that. I mean, no one's ever told you "good job." Never. I believe oh, that. Oh, good job. <clears throat> no, people tell me "good job" all the time, Rucka. Oh, and then you spit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. All right. Anyway, Mikey, back to back to your pick. So, anyways, he's just kind of a douche, and I don't like his face. And <laughs> no, okay, what specifically? Because like you, you see this guy, and he does look like kind of a douchebag, but you think, oh, maybe he's acting. Maybe he's acting. But like he's not. Bag. And and I've I've given him the benefit of the doubt. Like I actually thought he was cool in Whiplash. I thought he was okay. And I was like, wow, what a like it's crazy. He's actually playing. And I was like, okay. And then he hit the scene like hard. And What's was, what scene? Like he just started the becoming, scene, like the he, Hollywood. He oh, started Hollywood becoming scene. a thing, and yeah, there's something you just get a vibe. He's a cuck. Yeah, oh, he? <laughs> he's, see? He's, see? he's not woke or turned. Mm. So, so that, Mar- Mark, that's what I'm saying. Before, so that's be, no, that's fine. Uh, before we started recording this episode, mm. uh, we were discussing our picks, and Mikey mentioned this. And you immediately jumped on board too, Mark. You said that yeah, he's a huge douchebag, right? Um, I just, I just, I just see interviews with him, and I see his performances, and there's a level of consistency with his interviews and his performances that he always plays like mildly not unattractive friend of the lead of the movie, who's like, yeah, dude, he's like if puka shells were a person. He's like, oh, ooh. oh, that's, that's good. A, that's a you good know? one. 
He's like Rocky Marciano. After a stroke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who's Rocky Marciano? He was a boxer in the 50s. Oh, okay. he, he's, but he's got the same look. It looks like, yeah. it looks like Miles Teller's taking Miles Teller actually played a boxer in a movie. about. But it was a true story, but it was about a boxer who got paralyzed, who trained him. And I was like, I don't believe this, even if it's a true story. No. I'll watch mm-hmm. up until you get paralyzed, and then there's that. That's the happy ending for yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh boy! So you had to wait the uh, the entire movie uh, for for uh, million dollar baby. Million dollar baby. Yeah, you had to wait till the very end for million dollar baby for that payoff, huh? Oh, <laughs> another uh, yeah that that movie. Oh, yeah. That's a rabbit hole we can go down. That movie yeah. sucks too. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, so I'm gathering that you're probably not a fan of Clint Eastwood. But do you no, like no, no. Movie? There's some Clint Eastwood stuff I like. I think now he's like your grandpa with dementia when yeah. he's you know talking to chairs and being going to the the Republican National Convention and all that bullshit. Right. You give him a free pass because he's an old guy. No, Kinda I don't like get. Gandhi. I don't give him a free pass. I won't watch his movies anymore. But there, he, that doesn't mean he hasn't done work in the past. I think Unforgiven is truly a brilliant film. I think uh, uh, In the Line of Fire is a really good piece of entertainment. I think Play Misty for Me was the precursor to Fatal Attraction. He's made some good movies, but as he's gotten older and as our culture has become, we know now everything about celebrities. We know too much about them. Yeah. His reputation hovers before everything he does. I can't get past what an asshole I think he is mm. to enjoy his movies. And I think that when he he is good for certain movies, certain types of movies, most of his movies are like three and a half hours long. And he's yeah. like, he takes pleasure. Like I do one take. That's because you're gonna go take a nap, Grandpa. <laughs> and they're like, there's no editing. And you know, and then he, then he makes shit like American Sniper, which is like an infomercial for redneck twats. Made that guy a hero who who lied about everything he did. His uh, his numbers weren't that high, right? Um, the <laughs> He didn't. I don't think we need to question his Americanness or like. No, he's oh, he was an American. Yeah, he was a soldier. Great, but he yeah. lied about all that stuff. He uh, lied no, about like, all that stuff. There, yeah, there was a like there was some exaggeration and stuff going right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, what, yeah. what have you done uh, as a soldier in the in the war for, for America? Lots, yeah. Rucka. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. I, we don't. This is a. This is only. I made planes during WW two. I was in there riveting those fucking wings together. Yeah. Yeah, no, look. We can uh, do it. If we're if we're going to if we're going to put my record up against the American snipers, um I think the American sniper just might edge me out, but uh we're pretty close. We're neck and neck, I think. Mm. Yeah. So uh so Mikey, anything uh, anything else you want to add to what, what was his Miles Teller. Miles Teller. I will Go say ahead. this about Miles Teller. The best thing he did was not be in La La Land. Because as much as I loathe that movie now, if it had been him in that movie, I would have plucked my eyes out and lit them on fire. Was Never seen to it. Be? It was going to be Miles Teller and Emma Watson. And then she decided mm-hmm. to do Beauty and the Beast. And he apparently wanted more money. Rucka, do you know anything about Miles Teller? I guess just like with Whiplash, you know, it's like people are like, oh, this guy, he just wants to play drums. He doesn't care what anybody thinks. But like in the scene where he's talking to his cousins or his brothers or whoever those guys are, where they're like talking shit at the dinner table, like he obviously cares what they think or he wouldn't be like arguing with them. So the struggle is so, real for young white guys in America. Yeah. The struggle is real. Well, it's hard. You know, you meet a girl at the movie theater. She turns out to be kind of kind of lame, kind of boring. Um, you break up. Is that the the plot of La La Land? No, no this is a whiplash. whiplash. He breaks up with the girl. You didn't even see it. You oh, just I say didn't... they stole your fucking. Yeah, I know uh, they stole yeah. it. I saw that it was in the trailer. It's worth seeing for J.K. Uh, Simmons. He yeah. deserved the Oscar. He's good. he's yeah. the re- he's the engine of that movie. It's really an amazing good. performance. Yeah, they based him on me. Um, so uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. Mar- <laughs> at least the, at least the bald part. <laughs> yeah, he shaved hey, his head hey. for that role. <laughs> yeah. Correct. Um, okay. Uh, speaking of Mark. Do you have what's your pick for douchebag? The my pick is kind of a deep cut. There's yeah. so many to choose from. It feels like it's it's an embarrassment of riches. But mine is a um a, a Republican representative in the state of Missouri named Rick Bratton. Rick Bratton, Interesting. yeah, who this okay. week said at a press conference that gay people aren't humans. Ooh. And like every Republican politician who's anti-gay, he looks like a power bottom. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I want to measure how many miles of dick have actually been in both ends of this guy. Whoa. It's become it's become an unfunny cliche of the virulently homophobic Republican who just wants to get gang fucked by 14 porn stars. Yeah. You look at this guy and it's like him and Mike Pence should open a bed and breakfast in Provincetown. It's just, it's just, and as a gay man, it offends me that these are the type of people that we have. It's just disgusting. You know, um, he's, he, and they just, and they don't listen. They don't learn from anything before them. We've seen this episode of the show before. This is going to end with him in an airport with a dick in his mouth. Right. Or he's going to have, uh, 
attache carrying his luggage on an investigative trip somewhere who turns out to be a porn star or a hustler and it's just gross it's like dude come on out the water's fine and <laughs> and, and with your pursed lips and that bronzer we already know the letter has arrived check the mailbox uh-huh. the pursed lips that's a tell uh, huh oh There's yeah something going on with pursed lips oh yeah he yeah. actually said that he said that gays are not human like They're, did he mean like they're superhuman? Like he's uh, he's he's making he's laying the groundwork to well, come out. For what I want to do eventually, I would love to organize. You know how like there's these million moms, and it's actually like four fat moms with diabetes feet stumps who don't want to shop at Walmart because of Jesus. Right. I want to do a thing where every gay person in the United States of America for two days doesn't show up for work, and we'll see how much you you straight people get when we we're not working. Well, fucking t- there's no TV. There's no TV, <laughs> there's no there's no waiters, there's no hairdressers, there's no fashion consultants, there's no art teachers. Uh, there's no there's there's you know there's most college professors, the priests, all the priests are going to be gone. I mean, it's cr- it's crazy. <laughs> it's gone. crazy. We need to organize and be like, "Fuck you guys. Why do you care who we sleep with? The only time it matters to me who you want to fuck is if I want to fuck you or you want to fuck me. Otherwise, it's incidental." And this guy probably doesn't know anything about budget or the the, the state budget of Missouri right. or about what the school system's budget are or the infrastructure but he's so obsessed and the only when 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 these republicans think about gay sex more than i do it means they're gay they're gay they they have to be it's always projection I, every time someone is completely outspoken about being gay uh, about a certain issue and they can't drop it they're completely obsessed it's projection well and- look at Jesse Helms didn't Je- Jesse Helms was anti-gay and a huge racist no it was Strom, Th- Strom Thurmond huge racist who, who who when he ran for president 400 years ago yeah. ran on segregation after he after he mm-hmm. died it was found that he had five black children he was yep. having sex with the I'm like you guys are so poorly written as a writer if I turned this stuff into a studio I would never work again I right. we just need this planet needs a rewrite we need William Goldman to come in and do a script polish because this movie, this movie is like is on what this is like the Fantastic Four movie. It's uh, who wrote <laughs> this? Shit? Who greenlit this shit? It's something about themselves that they hate that they are trying to bury or eradicate in the world. And that makes me sad. I would, I would want to, you know, it's like the, the the Orlando shooter was the same thing. It wasn't, it wasn't a terror. He wasn't a terrorist. He was a guy who grew up in a very strict religious household with a father who called him faggot all the time. Right. And it makes me sad that this guy hated himself so much that that's what happened. Yeah. You know? It's it's not a justification. He was, I'm glad the guy's dead because what he did was awful. But it makes yeah. me sad that we, in this day and age, we exist where you can make somebody hate themselves so much that they're pent up emotionally emotions go into a place of rage or self-harm or harming others yeah. it's really really you know it's it's at the risk of sounding treacly every one of us should be in love and have someone love us and i wish that for everybody i don't know why people are threatened by that you know it, it doesn't make any sense to me it's the one where it's the one place today where the 20 somethings are so progressive about sexuality and sexual orientation and fluidity you know they i wish they would all vote but they're all really progressive about human sexuality i mean it's they're so much cooler about things but i just i just don't get it i, I it takes so much energy to be angry i would much rather be asleep if you're going to if i'm going to be angry it needs to be about something real not about what my neighbors are doing right unless it's you no. you're just an asshole uh, hey <laughs> You know what? You can't. Uh, you, you need to bring me in separately if you want. If you guys want to shit on me, you got to bring Maddox in as a douchebag. But yeah, no, you're you're right, Mark. Um, it's always these these people who are like violent homophobes who have uh, you know the biggest problem with gay people. They are almost always closeted, and uh, that happened to me in high school one time. Um, this kid. Well, you're Greek, so you're gay adjacent. No, no I'm Armenian. Armenian. Oh, my oh, oh, Greek. I'm Greek. Oh, so you're gay oh, adjacent. I'm so, oh, yeah, was that racist? <laughs> was that racist of me to think you were Greek? Um, no, we're really okay. close. Actually. Yeah, okay. we're brother. We're yeah. The countries and me and me. Well, that's like my one of my favorite yeah. jokes as a kid was how do you separate the men from the boys in Greece with a crowbar? <laughs> <laughs> and why did why did the Greek why did the Greek man go home? Because he couldn't leave his brothers behind. <laughs> well, Mikey, Mikey and I are brothers. We're real tight bros. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's always it's always these guys. Oh, uh, here's what do you think of Michelle Bachman's husband? So if you guys, right now, I want you to Google, if you can, I know a lot of people listen to the podcast while they're driving. When you get home, Google Michelle Bachman's husband. Tell me what you think. He looks like Paula Dean doing Sean Spicer drag. Ooh, whoa. Yeah, so I heard these rumors about uh, Michelle Bachman's husband, right? And every, and I thought, oh, everyone's Look just being at an him. asshole. I've never sucked his dick, but he's a homo. Yeah, he's he's. Did you yeah. see this picture that I, pull, I <laughs> Mikey pulled up a picture, pulled up a picture of 
Michelle Michelle Bachman's <laughs> husband is uh you know when I when I heard these rumors and things I finally looked up a picture I'm like oh my god this is this is uh you know I'm not even I don't I don't even have the most in tune gaydar I don't know sometimes for years but uh, <laughs> uh, there was a great line in an episode of Weeds years ago where this uh this character said about a another a gay character that he's as gay as a purse full of rainbows <laughs> and this guy's even gayer than a, he's a gay he's as gay as a purse full of rainbows on the back of a My Little Pony <laughs> at Gay Pride getting fisted. Okay. Uh well great great pick Rick. What's the name Rick? Rick Britt Bratton. Rick, Rick, Rick Bratton. Bratton. Go look him up. Go look him up. Rick I Bratton. I want to look him up. Rick Bratton. B R A T T I N or uh, a state representative in the lovely state of Missouri. We'll post a picture on the video feed as well so you guys can see these. He's Look so- at that. Look at that. Look at that. That's a tin, that's a grinder ad. <laughs> so so I just uh, I just looked up a picture of Rick Bratton. He's a handsome he's a handsome guy, perfect teeth. He's a little bit a little bit too well put bit together. Too well put together. Mm-hmm. He's, a robot. he's very he's it's manicured. Like a robot. He's you know he manicured. has like mm-hmm. 19 different lotions on his vanity and like 15 different soaps and like three loofahs. He 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 looks like the type of person who puts a lot of attention to detail in his grooming, his personal grooming, mm-hmm. his personal effect, which doesn't necessarily mean anything, but... Uh, and you're you know he's, he's probably shaved bare. Ooh. He's probably bare down there. Huh. Interesting. The nerve. All right. Well, good pick for douchebag. I think that uh, that definitely qualifies. Rucka, you yeah. got a pick for us? Who's, your, uh, who's yeah. your douchebag? The biggest douchebag in the universe. Who's that? Gandhi. Okay, <laughs> yeah. no. Get, get um, out. <laughs> Indira Gandhi this time. Oh, the other the Gandhi. Other one. Yeah. I kind of want to go with Mike Illich because of that call, but like he's his body is still warm. I think he died like not too long ago, and yeah. he's got a Rest family. Some of his relatives worked with me, and a, one of his like great nephews or someone worked with me at Little Skeezers. This wow. is a true story, not a joke, not a scam. Self-entitled young man, thought he didn't have to do anything. Can he be the douchebag of the week? I don't actually remember his name, but... You know what? I just thought of this. You know, with the with the nerd theme we've got going here today, uh, I think I'm gonna go with Kevin Smith. Ooh, Kevin Smith! Yeah. Interesting choice. Why Kevin Smith? Because I don't Mark, fucking like him. Mark is nodding his head. Mark, why? Why do you think he likes Kevin Smith? <laughs> Who likes Kevin Smith? He does. Oh, you don't. You like Kevin Smith? Um, I I have to remove myself because I'm actually friends with Kevin. I know oh, Kevin. Oh, uh, right. you, you can. You, it's a debate. You can no, stick no, up you know, for him. you're allowed to have your opinions. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know I, him. I am admittedly not I, not the biggest fan of his cinematic work. Um, yeah. I do think that Red State's actually his best movie and a really underrated film. I think that he really grew as a filmmaker. But Kevin has been, um, I think he's a great raconteur. Listening to him, I could listen to him talk for hours upon hours, and he's a great storyteller. And um, the, when I met, I met Kevin in person for the first time, I saw him. Can I digress with this little side yeah, of course. story? Yeah, please. I was at um, Cafe 101 with a friend of mine and this guy walked in with his wife and I said to my friend, I'm like, that looks like a skinny Kevin Smith. <laughs> and it was. And Kevin had lost a lot of weight. And I said, I said you know, I, we had, Kevin and I had a bunch of mutual friends at the time and I said, I'm going to go say something to him because as a man over 35, you know that your metabolism says, guess what? You're 15 pounds heavier no matter what you do. So I went up to him and I said, hey, Mr. Smith, um, my name's Mark. I, I wanted to just say, you know, when you walked in, I saw, I thought it was a skinny version of you. And I said, you look great and i said i just wanted to commend you on that because i know how hard it is to lose oh, weight. that's very nice and he's, uh, like, oh. yeah. he's like oh cool what's your name and i said mark andraco and he's a comic book fan so he's known my work oh. he knew my work and he's been nothing but very gracious to me and he's done things before he even knew me on, a, on his website he, he mentioned a book that i wrote in the 90s how it should be a movie and all that stuff he's been very gracious to me and the conversations i've had he's been really 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 fen- friendly i know his persona can rub people the wrong way but that's right. part of what we do you know none of us are who we are on this podcast we're sure. all kind of playing up parts of us um but actually not just because he's nice to me, but because he's actually a very, a very, very nice guy. Um, I actually kind of disagree with Kevin. So not to not to shit on you, but um, you disagree with him being a douchebag. I do. I the do. Biggest the, the, pig, the, yeah, the biggest one in the universe. The biggest one in the universe. That's what we're going I, for. I think there's. I think there's a lot of. I think. I think you're entitled to that opinion, but I just yeah. want to offer a counterpoint. Uh, saying- yeah. So you know what he's kind of projected in my experience. He seems like kind of a dick. <laughs> um, not just a, not a dick. It's not like he like tries to like overdo this. Uh, uh, okay, can I say it? This beta male. I'm not even gonna say it. The cuck word. Okay, you just he, just, you he just kind of it. like like wears it like a badge of honor. Like, uh, hey man, I I didn't get laid until I was this age. It's like, dude, like, why? I, I don't know. I, his movies are overrated. Like, they're not that funny. Uh, I saw Jay and Silent Bob uh, in the theaters and just thinking like like 
The only good part of that shit was when they found out who talked shit about them on the internet and went around the country beating mm-hmm. the shit out of them. <laughs> that was it. No, no, I can see, I can, yeah. I can see your point. Um, I think he's, I think he's a better writer than he is an actual filmmaker in a lot of yeah. ways. But I've never directed a film, so that's easy for me to say. I've never been on set with actually calling the shots. But, uh, but I do think, I think a lot of what you don't like is his branding. It's what we all do. It's you know, it's it's Maddox. It's you know, it's 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 this persona we take on to ex- accentuate certain aspects of ourselves to give us a brand and that's so important right now and say what you will you know who he is how many film directors do you know by name and that's a that's a thing that you know that that persona might be abrasive and might rub you the wrong way and I totally get that but it's all about making you know in the way the entertainment world works now you have to brand yourself and make yourself part of the property it's a it's an unfortunate thing I'm not really I've had to do it recently and I'm not really comfortable doing it um, but once again I think you're reacting to his persona the guy behind that persona is actually a really sweet supportive guy who really loves film and comics and all that sort yeah, of thing so, so uh, his persona he's a good performer then his persona okay well Mike Illich then is the biggest douchebag uh, let's let's uh, change it up to that <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> No, I wasn't no. piling no, on No, I mean, you've got information you. and you know this guy and I don't know him. I guess I just, I needed to think of someone I, I, I just kind of think is kind of a, a turd. Well, so I, I, I don't know Kevin Smith and I don't know much about him, except I like most of the things of his that I've seen. And I didn't watch Jay and Silent Bob in, uh, that was the, no, Clerks. Clerks, Clerks. Was the first I didn't one. I didn't watch Clerks for uh, until years after it was out of movie theaters and I'd heard hype for years and I finally sat down. I'm like, all right, let's see this. Let's see. Uh, let's see what everyone's raving about. And I finally watched it, and I thought it was pretty funny. I thought it was a pretty good, uh, good movie, and it was an interesting take. I'd never seen that kind of uh, direction for a, a big movie. I, I kind of wish he had stayed on that path because that movie he was on. He he could have gone down the path of being like a straight John Waters. You know, with uh, the, you watch the early John Waters stuff, and it's so subversive and weird, and not really well made, but just so specific and dirty and filthy and gleeful. Um, but I do think if you ever get a chance to see him speak, you should see him speak. I recommend it highly. He 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 is a great public speaker. He tells stories like nobody's business. He's really entertaining. Well, most most I don't like uh, the celebration of uh, of mediocrity. Like there, his every one of his movies has at least one guy who's like uh, just like a slightly overweight uh, like over like man child who like. You know, who has a girlfriend who's like they're not that into each other, who's still living with his mom. There's like always there's like uh, have, you hey, been, have you been to America? <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like, do I need to see that shit in movies? Do I is that what I look for? I look for superheroes. No, that's right? that's like, legitimate. Yeah. That's legitimate. I always talk about, you know, there was a show, um, you know, my so-called life was a huge critically acclaimed show, but it was only on for like 12 or 16 episodes. And Buffy the Vampire Slayer was on for seven years. Buffy and my so-called life were both about being teenagers, but Buffy did it with the metaphor of supernatural, like when you sleep with your boyfriend, he loses his soul. And people don't want to have the struggle of day to day and go watch day to day with their entertainment dollar. I get that. That's what, you know, people don't want to go work 40 hours a week to struggle to pay their house payment and then come home and watch a show about a bunch of people struggling to pay their house payment. They want to watch people in outer space or something like that. They want an escape. So I get that. Well, Well, not just... Yeah, not only that, but also in in art, like we look for something inspiring. Or we used to, or in theory, we could. Like maybe that's why superheroes are popular, or whatever. Um, yeah, it's escapism. Yeah, um, not escapism. Something to reach art, for. Art is a, okay. Art is you you concretize uh, some a certain aspect of existence. I mean, greatness does exist. There are people that are wildly successful. Aren't you supposed to be this? wildly inspiring yeah person. i am That's yeah right. i'd rather he's watch... sitting on a pile of gold you can't yeah. see it under yeah. the table but... I'd, <laughs> I'd rather watch gold him turds. <laughs> gold to gold crusted turds <laughs> keep pooping i'd rather watch a movie about uh, an armenian from utah who uh, elbowed his way away from the life handed to him and became a mildly inspiring uh podcaster in los angeles mildly okay very inspiring very inspiring Thank you, Mark. Oh, but thank you. For yeah, saying- I'm, sa- I'm saying wrong. I don't want to see that movie. <laughs> <laughs> You'd rather see a movie about the uh, alternate version of Maddox's life, where he at this age is still in his mom's attic playing uh, original Nintendo with his. Uh, Wait, with- which games? <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm into it. With Kevin Smith, uh, a couple of years ago at Comic Con, mm-hmm. I was walking down the streets. Uh, it's like two, three in the morning after last call. Everyone's pissed drunk. Uh, my friends and I were walking by. And next to me, in the opposite direction, walks Kevin Smith. I tap my friend on the shoulder. I'm like, "Dude, that was uh, that was Kevin Smith who just walked by." And he turn he turns around, and he looks, and he he, he takes a, he does a double take. He goes, "No, nah, that wasn't Kevin Smith." I'm like, 
it's fucking Kevin Smith. He's wearing the jersey and everything, and he's got the goatee, he's got the glasses. He goes, dude, that's someone dressed up as Kevin Smith. Oh, there's it's always not- Kevin Smith cosplay. It, it's yeah. comic. And there's one guy I've seen every year, He just he's signed with Bob, and he'll just lean against one of the pillars and stand at the con for hours on end just looking around. <laughs> that's got to be weird. People are when- so committed to that shit, too. <sighs> yeah. So I turn around, I'm like, no, man, I'm pretty sure that was that the actual Kevin <laughs> Smith. He goes, I uh, guarantee it wasn't. And so we chased a block after this guy. I ran down... And we were like, sir, sir, Kevin, Kevin. He turns around and goes, yes. I'm like, you're Kevin Smith, right? And he goes, no, my name's Steve. <laughs> he was, and, and still, I thought he was like, it was a put on. And so I drunkenly took a selfie with this guy. And uh, I was like, I'm going to show everybody the next day that it was Kevin Smith I took a picture with. And uh, I posted it online the next day. And my friends, who were also at Comic-Con, who met the real Kevin Smith, posted pictures with, with their Kevin Smith. And I looked at them side by side. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is nothing, not even close. It's yeah, not. Your guy was Chinese and three feet tall. <laughs> no. He, 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 all he had was the Kevin Smith goatee and the jersey, and that's about it. But uh, anyway, I like the movie Tusk. Tusk is a, kind of a sleeper hit, I think. It was a horror movie that came out a couple of years ago, and I didn't know Kevin Smith was behind it. And also, Kevin Smith got me into Degrassi. Uh, when mm-hmm. it, that was the first time I ever saw Degrassi was the, the Kevin Smith directed episodes, and it was just one episode or something I think like so, that. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I saw that episode and I, I really got into it uh, just for that just for that hot minute. I don't really watch uh, Degrassi anymore. Uh, <laughs> you know, just, I'm, I'm, I'm Mikey. Cut cut the cut the tape. Start this over. Edit this out. It. Yeah. Anyway, um, anyway, anything else you want to add for Kevin Smith? Uh, nothing really comes to mind at this time. Okay. <laughs> No, I feel bad. I feel like I'm. No, bullied you. man, you got your opinion. It's a debate. It's well, better. Okay. I mean, also because the listeners are going to have their own perspective. Yeah, they're gonna. Yeah, they're right. gonna. Chances are, some of them are going to tell me I'm a. I'm a horrible person for disrespecting Lord and Savior Kevin Smith. Well, I'm going to be called a name dropper and a kiss ass. So it'll it'll balance out. All right. No, it's fair. You know everyone. You know a lot of people. <laughs> well, you live in this town long enough, yeah. and you eventually do. I mean, right. if you live in if you live in like Appalachia, you're going to know a lot of coal miners. If you yeah. live in Los Angeles, you're going to know a lot of people in the business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You live in Utah, you're going to know a lot of flavors of Jello, <laughs> and amazing. a lot of sister wives. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> lots lots of denim dressmakers. Ugh. Bar- Ar- Arby's employees. All right, guys. I got the real biggest douchebag in the universe, hands down. I got this one. Is it Gandhi? No, it's not Gandhi. It's Who not is Gandhi. It? It's Gwyneth Paltrow. Ooh. Yeah. That's right. Uh, first of all, you don't, don't even say anything else. You win. Thank you. I don't even know when exactly it was she lost her mind. All I know is I've seen her in some movies, and then next thing I know, I'm looking at her website. She's got this uh, this new website, it's Goop. It's not new. It's been around for a long time. It's been around for a while, like a decade, I think. And she's got all sorts of crazy theories about health and fitness and wellness. And she has like dirt therapy and all these just bonkers, bonkers things. Her newest thing that just came out is that she's advocating that women buy these jade eggs. Okay. These are actual egg shaped pieces of rock, you know, made out of Mm -hmm. jade and put them in your vaginas. Mm. All right. This is, um, yeah, it's from, this is from National Review here. It says Gwyneth Paltrow's lifestyle publication, Goop, is now telling women to put $66 egg shaped jade gemstones into their vaginas to increase their chi, orgasms, vaginal muscle tone, hormonal balance, and get this, feminine energy. Um. Feminine energy. If you're feeling a little low in your feminine energy, Mikey? Yeah. Mikey, are you feeling low in he's your got, He's got a half dozen in his ass right now. <laughs> Mikey is. Uh, at 100% with this feminine energy. How about you, Rucka? I'm way up there. You going to put one of these in your pussies? Yes. Um, My nipples are tender. I'm, I'm PMSing right now, so. Hmm. You uh, you might need, it's, you're, you're good on, on jade eggs up your, uh, up your vagina. This, uh, this item sold, is continues, it says uh, the item is sold on Goop's online store. Dr. Jen Gunter, an OBGYN for Kaiser Permanente in San Francisco, told the Washington Post that not only is it biologically impossible for a rock to have an effect on your hormones, but it's also a great way to cause problems like bacterial vaginosis and toxic shock syndrome. Because turns out jade is porous. Yeah, well, you know, this is, I'm sure I would love to figure out who bought them all and go to the houses of the women that bought those all and forbid them to ever have children or reproduce because you're an idiot. 
And but we are, we're in a culture of people that don't get their kids vaccinated because Jenny McCarthy said so. Right. So is it any surprise that people are going to listen to some pretentious, spoiled, rich white girl who who literally on her site at one point said, if you suffer from migraines, you should put uncut diamonds under your pillow while you sleep. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> Fuck you. And then did, did you see the thing? She also did a thing a couple of years ago where she we, there was a study about what every one of every the average American family in poverty has like eighty dollars or something a month or whatever for groceries. And she showed what she bought, and it was like. Like lavender leaves and one stalk of white asparagus. Yeah. And, you know, and it's just like, you know what? Don't, you know, you're rich. That's fine. You don't have to apologize for it. But don't try and pretend to be down with people who actually have real issues, you fucking hypocrite. It's not normal. Your lifestyle isn't normal, Gwyneth. Nobody lives your lifestyle except for your rich dipshit friends and you're in a fucking bubble. And you know all her friends don't like her. Yeah. She's, the, she's the mom that comes to the plate. It's like, oh shit, let's get the box wine out before Gwyneth gets here because we're going to have to drink jade water that Indians prayed over at the full yeah. moon. Fuck her. There's a store in Los Angeles. Have you guys ever visit Los Angeles, the listeners? You're coming here to go on a tour or whatever. This seems unlikely, but I'm going to recommend a grocery store. Make it one of your tour stops. It's called Erewhon. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Erewhon. I'm not kidding Which is you. Native American for asshole. Yeah. You, you. I guarantee you can go to the Hollywood Walk of Fame and take fewer photos than you will take in Erewhon. You will, your jaw will drop at the bullshit you see in this store. It's for people that find Whole Foods not douchey enough. Oh, yeah. It, it just makes Whole Foods seem like a reasonable grocery store. Oh, it makes Whole Foods seem like a food bank. It makes Whole Foods seem like a 7-Eleven. You walk into Erewhon. Uh, Even the name, it yeah, makes me. Yeah, it, it makes my that? face Erewhon. hurt to say Erwan. Erwan. Oh, that's you know there are so many children. That, I bet. I bet she has a kid named Erwan. Oh, it's such bullshit. I'm, I'm sure. No, she, she does. probably has an albino turtle from Madagascar named Erwan. Yeah, a, a, a dog that she rescued, and you didn't fucking rescue it. You adopted it. All right. Someone you adopted res- a fucking dog. rescue me from Gwyneth fucking Paltrow. Amen to that. <laughs> So walking to Erwan, I uh, the first time I walk in, I'm looking around and, and everything is fucked in some way, in some weird way. Everything is fucked, and I'm looking at the eggs. All right, a dozen eggs. I'm like, okay, that's a thing I recognize. Eggs are a thing. Seventy five dollars. No, uh, just about. It was eighteen dollars. Eighteen dollars for a dozen eggs. Oh my God. That's because they were human eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. At least then it, it would make sense. At least something would make sense in this fucking Erwan's eugenics store. deli. Yeah, and they have like weird shit like licorice chocolate and then, uh, you know, of course it's like, you know, $8 for for two nibs. And then uh, I was walking around with my friend. We were looking for the most expensive item in the store. We found trail mix, okay? This is a bag of trail mix with uh, raw cashews. They are activated. Activated raw cashews, okay? What does that mean? That's like artisan. That means nothing. Yeah. It's it means adjective. jack shit. There was, there's that and then there was um, uh, pumpkin seed, raw pumpkin seeds. Okay, so you didn't even you didn't even bake it, and then you have, <laughs> and then you have goji berries. Which, by the way, guys, you can buy fuck a fucking bushel of goji and berries. I'm gonna go on record here. No one likes acai or goji berries. They both taste like fucking rubber turds. People that say they like that are full of shit. I, you know, I'll eat it. I don't give a you shit. You won't eat goji berries just by themselves. They always have to be mixed in something. Yeah, it's you like put it in soup or something or a smoothie. Anyway. Guess how much for this trail mix of cashews, pumpkin seeds, and goji berries? Do we all get to go, go ahead? Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, the the closest one was not going how, over. How Price much, is right rule. How much is how much was the bag? How much? It was bag, twelve ounces. Twelve ounces. Twelve ounce bag of cashews, 15. pumpkin seeds. Fifteen dollars. Anyone else? Ninety dollars. Nope. I will nope. say I will say twenty four ninety nine. Ooh, you guys are all uh, Mark. Mark takes it. He's the closest. Twenty eight dollars. Twenty eight dollars for this uh, for this bag of trail mix. Twenty eight dollars and for twelve ounces of product. You can buy good weed cheaper than that. Yeah. And that makes goji berries taste good. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, Erwan, if you're ever coming to Los Angeles to go on a tour, make sure to make Erwan a stop. I guarantee you will take more photos there than anywhere else. This place is batshit crazy. And they have they have crystal water, okay? And they sell it in a little vial, like maybe a three, four ounce Mm -hmm. little bottle, uh, almost like a perfume dispenser. And it comes with an eyedropper. And so you can take a few drops of crystal water and I, I'm, I'm reading the back of this thing I'm like what the fuck is crystal water what is this Does it, are the crystals in it no it's just water that's run over crystals and then they sell something called an EMF bath wash this is all shit that it's in Gwyneth Paltrow's wheelhouse it's an EMF bath wash and what EMF stands for is electromagnetic force and so what it's supposed to do and it, it, again anytime you go to one of these stores you want to know if it's bullshit Look for the following keywords: cleanse, toxins, artisanal, artisanal, activated, raw, ancient, 
wisdom, <laughs> son. And like anything, <laughs> anytime you read any of the shit, you're uh, you're getting scammed. Get the fuck out of there. Yeah. So this uh, anyway. So um, Gwyneth Paltrow, she has this the the ingredients for her smoothie that she drinks. Right, she puts it on, puts this on Money, her website. Money, entitlement, and gold. I uh, might as well be. And one um, egg. The the smoothie. The ingredients for the smoothie cost two hundred and twenty three dollars, two hundred twenty three dollars, and has something called moon dust in it. Listen to this. Oh my god! The ingredients are okay. A cup of almond milk. All right, that's fine. That's reasonable. It's like two bucks here if you uh, buy a gallon of Can almond. Can we stop milk. calling it almond milk? Milk comes from things that have milk glands. You don't you don't milk almonds. It's almond paste. Ooh, it's not. All right, milk. I'll give you that. So almond, almond paste, paste, a cup of <laughs> a cup of almond paste. <laughs> But the, no, you know what, Mark? That you you have to differentiate because then the next ingredient is a teaspoon, excuse me, a tablespoon of almond butter. All right, so that's I would say almond butter is is more akin to a paste than the arm, almond milk. But that's uh, five dollars and thirty cents. Almond juice then. for a tub. There, you, I'll, I'll take almond juice. Uh, a table, a teaspoon of coconut oil, two tablespoons vanilla mushroom protein powder. Vanilla mushroom protein powder costs thirty five dollars. Vanilla. Let's let's dissect that name. Vanilla mushroom. Mm-hmm. Were they out of raspberry onion? Yeah. F- vanilla mushroom. Yeah, oh, eat shit. A asshole. A teaspoon of maca maca powder. Make America uh, great again. Maca. Hmm. Oh, I thought you said maga powder. Oh, not maga powder. It's no. powdered Republicans. No, ma- no maga no <laughs> maga maga powder. It's really it's high not. in fat. Yeah. You have a teaspoon of ashwagandha. Ashwagandhi. Bless you. Oh, that's a real douchey herb, Rucka. You wouldn't like it. It has Gandhi in it. Yeah, Ashwagandha. It likes to sleep with younger herbs, naked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they don't. Uh, they don't do it. They don't touch. They don't touch. They just. They just. What? They, they make Ashwagandha water. Yeah. They just wash water over the younger herbs. What do you guys have against asceticism? We're gonna talk about that someday. Um, then there is the teaspoon of Ho Shu Wu. Ho Shu Wu. It's some uh, ancient herb or again ancient. It's ancient a, Chinese secret, huh? Ancient Chinese secret. Then a teaspoon of cardiceps. Cardiceps. What are those? That's a vegetable or something, right? Cardiceps. Then you have a teaspoon of moon dust of your choice. What the fuck? Is I prefer the Saturn moons. Moon dust. And it says moon dust costs anywhere from $55 to $65 for moon dust. That must be what she calls cocaine. It's got, it's, yeah, I don't know what the fuck moon dust is. And then this is another big one. Okay, If you ever see this in a store or a product ingredient, run. You're getting scammed. Himalayan sea salt. Nope. Pink Himalayan, Pink anything. Himalayan sea salt, yeah, yeah, and then you got a pinch of vanilla powder that's optional. She, <laughs> she because that's, the, that's the cheap thing. That's the cheap. The cheap thing is optional, and then uh, bl- and then she said, "This is part of the ingredients, uh, the instructions." She says, "Blitz all the ingre- in- ingredients together. Blitz them together. Fuck you, Gwyneth. Oh, uh, uh, douche. Uh, I want to make her watch all her movies like an uh, Clockwork Orange." I don't even. What has she been in? What's a? She hasn't done anything in a long time. I will say though, she did appear on Glee its first season, and she was actually really, really funny. It annoyed me because like she and Kate Hudson, actresses I don't really enjoy, were both really, really great on Glee, and I was like, oh damn. Now I have to rethink myself. These were great performances. But she has a website named Goop, and she was married to Coldplay, and her child's named oh. Apple. So oh yeah. man, that, she could cure cancer, and she'd still be a douchebag. Oh, she was married to Coldplay, the Coldplay guy. Yeah. Oh barf. Col- is his name Cole? Yeah, Cole. <laughs> his name's Cole. <laughs> Chris play. Chris Martin, I think, is his name. Cole play. And she was too douchey oh. for him. Yeah, he's the worst. He ran for the hills. Wow. So that's saying something. Wow. What when an perfect... actual douche leaves the douche factory, you know things are bad. That that is a perfect couple, though. That's like a power douche couple, <sighs> don't you think? You. It makes me happy that two terrible douchey people like find each other in life, and that's Gwyneth Paltrow and Mr. Cole from Coldplay. Coldplay. It's Coldplay. Right. Cold. Coldplay. Coldplay. It's one word. Bunch of douchebags. I got pissed off when Coldplay made the tribute to uh, Beastie Boys a while back. Oh, shit. Because when I think Beastie Boys, I think mopey and albino, pasty British guys doing Oasis knockoffs. Yeah. And and I and I. But I'm coming off like an asshole. <laughs> no, <it's laughs> we good. we all. That's this podcast. We make people. Yeah. We put people in a bad mood. This what, are you, what are you going to say about that? I don't remember. Coldplay and Beastie Boys. Oh, oh! I just I didn't even know about that. Yeah, That's fucking, it was so douchey. Ugh. And I, and they're they're like no one. Uh, their fans are defending Coldplay. They're like no one's heard of Beastie Boys. Everyone knows who Coldplay is. And then I was gonna get on my high horse and blast them. And uh, then I did some research and ran some quick numbers. It turns out they're pretty much right. I mean, Beastie Boys is a much, much smaller band. Although everyone knows what? who Beastie Boys are. But we're talking about England. That's like saying that Robbie Williams is a bigger star than 
Michael Jackson. In England, yeah, it's like Hasselhoff was big in Germany. These statistics can all be manipulated. Yeah, and like depends on the time period. Back in the 90s, the Beastie Boys were like the ultimate household name. Yeah, yeah. And every sci-fi movie last summer had... Intergalactic. Inter- yeah, had, mm-hmm. so they're, they're, they're going to... And the Beastie Boys are actually innovators. You know, I'm not yeah. the biggest fan of the Beastie Boys. Um, I, I respect them more than I enjoy them. But they're, let's look at influences. Let's look at, you know... Bringing it back to, towards movies, look at like you know Moonlight versus La La Land. Who are they going to be talk? Who are people going to be talking about in twenty years? People are going to be talking about the Beastie Boys and being influenced by them in twenty, thirty, forty years. Right. People might be listening to Coldplay because there'll be elevators in the future. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it, let, let's talk about you can be a successful pop band, but let's talk about actually influencing the art form you're a part of. Sure. Well, well, I got, now I'm a pretentious asshole. Well, it, it reminds me of when uh, Lady Gaga's fans, like when Lady Gaga and Madonna. Like they got into some sort of public, uh, you know, fight and two like, titans. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> at this point, Lady Gaga had been famous for like a year and a half, and her fa- it was like the height of her success, and all her fans were little kids that were all on Twitter saying "fuck you, Madonna." No one's heard of you. Nobody knows who the fuck you are. You're irrelevant. And it's like, okay, but Madonna, <laughs> say what you will. You don't have to be a fan, but she was a fucking powerhouse for. A, she yeah. has been like she. Came back. She, she'll go away. Come back after ten years with a big hit. Yeah, she, right. you know, it's like of the eighties. We had, mm-hmm. you know, we had Madonna, Prince, Michael Jackson, David Bowie, Peter Gabriel. We had all these people that, whether you like them or not, you have to you have to acknowledge the impact they had on culture. I mean, sure. no one's going to remember. Lady Gaga is known for being Madonna adjacent. Yeah, you know, Madonna. Everyone knows who that is. Yeah, of course, Madonna is not. And by the way, anytime you you levy the charge that something or somebody is irrelevant, guess what, dipshit. The fact that you're talking about it makes it not irrelevant. Anyway, moving on, I do want to mention that our new bonus episode is finally out. Aw, oh, shit. Yeah, people are downloading it. It's finally on iTunes and Amazon, so yeah. we'll link to those on the website as well. Uh, thank you so much for supporting the show, guys. And by the way, we're going to have the other shows on this network possibly offer some new bonus shows as well. That's all coming up. And we've got some new shows coming. The podcast competition, which, by the way, got derailed for a little bit because I was finishing up my book, which uh, is just an endless amount of work, copious amounts. I don't recommend anyone ever become a writer uh, or write anything ever again. And by the way, that's that's 100% true. I used to be one of those guys who thought that everybody should express themselves. Everybody- no! <laughs> yeah, wrong, Mark. Th- wrong. Yep. That's that's what another right. That's what two writers are telling you right now. Just because you have an opinion doesn't mean it's a good one. And and by the way, you don't know how to express yourself. No. There are people whose job it is to write. It's not you. People think if they make out a Christmas card that they're writers. Yeah. It is. It is. It is. It's absolutely insane. I've been writing for over twenty years now, and I didn't even call myself a writer until I got my first book deal. Oh, I I never called myself a writer until I made money doing yeah. it. Yeah. Because in, until then, I'm an aspiring writer. Right. You don't go to your mechanic to get his opinions. Yeah, and if you're, if you're out there listening and you're thinking, hmm, should I go to plumbing school or should I become a writer? Become a plumber. Your life is going to be so much easier. You'll be better. You'll, you'll be, be happier. You'll be so much happier. Yeah. And, you'll, and you'll make more money. Sure. You'll be happier. You'll make more money. Everything will be better. And we won't have to hear your opinions. And <laughs> uh, basically, all I want to say, tell everyone to do is shut up. Um, but anyway, uh, thanks for checking out the bonus episode. <laughs> we really, really appreciate that. Um, it's a lot of fun. And uh, we're going to have another one coming up soon. Uh, thank you thank you to everyone who has supported the show with Mad Bucks. And again, these uh, these videos are going on the website as well. I'm starting to edit these and post these on the website. You guys are liking those. Yeah. But moving on, I got some quick news headlines from around the web. Are these real? Yeah, these are some real headlines. This is from Australia. A senator becomes the first woman to breastfeed in parliament. What do you guys think of this? Now, I also there, was there a man who breastfeeded before her because it says first woman. First woman. Yeah. Why did they <laughs> specify the gender? First senator becomes first person to breastfeed in, in parliament. We know we assume yeah. the gender. Uh, we assume. Maybe she was an almond and she was breastfeeding almond milk. Yeah. Oh, almond paste. Wow. <laughs> almond paste. <laughs> I need a barf sound effect. Uh, her name is uh, Senator Larissa Waters, deputy co-leader of the Australian Greens Party, became the first woman in Australia political history to breastfeed her baby during a parliament session on May 9th. Now, here's the thing. I'm a big fan of public breastfeeding. Do it. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. Just do it. Who cares? If it keeps your baby quiet, please put yeah. the tit in the baby's mouth. Put, the tit in, put all the tits in the mouth. Not only do you not give a shit, you're a fan of it. Uh, you know, I mean, you just said you're a big fan of it. We saw his search history. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't get off on it. 
you know. But yeah, why not? Who gives a shit? Take your whip your tit out. That being said, at an actual parliamentary session, yeah. there's got to be. Can she go back to her office? It's there not about go. the exposing of the breast yeah. or the child. It's about appropriateness of the time. Can you imagine you're having a stock a stockholders meeting? Yeah, and you're like, oh, I need to change my catheter. Right. No, 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 that's fine. I'm I'm not anti catheter, but go do that. That that's not the time nor the place for this. Now, look, I get it. If she's trying to make a, I, this seems like it was more of a political statement. You don't have to do it on the floor of parliament. People are trying to conduct business there. Go the yeah, you, babies why, why aren't are supposed you, to be there. Yeah, why are you bring your fucking baby to parliament? Well, that's that's the, a new holiday. Bring your baby a, to it's parliament. It's a political though. statement, right? Is that what it is? It's like a pride parade. Do they need? Are they doing it for exercise? No, it's it's a it's a political statement. It's saying we're here. Like don't like don't ignore us, right? Yeah, it says here Waters returned to parliament after ten weeks of maternity leave and breastfed her two month old daughter and second child Alla Joy. She had two children there. Oh, oh it's her second child. Okay, Alla Joy. Hold Alla on. Joy. Her name, no. I'm, now I disagree with everything Aaliyah, she's Aaliyah doing. Aaliyah Joy. Yeah. Aaliyah Joy's even worse. Aaliyah. Um, she's breastfeeding two children? No, it was it, her daughter was two-year <laughs> two-month-old daughter. Okay. Um, I was going to say if she's if one of these freaky moms who's breastfeeding like a 4-year-old, I just I want I If want. they have teeth, if they can open your bra, they shouldn't be breastfeeding. Yeah, she should be in she should be on vacation with daddy of 5, aka in prison. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so she says here during a vote, listen to this, listen, I thought this was maybe a women's issue that they were talking about on parliament. So she brought it to do this big show. She did this during a vote for the greens policy motion on a federal budget. Dipshit. This is a federal budget. You need to pay attention and you can't pay attention to both your baby and the federal fucking budget if you're breastfeeding and you have your child there. But it's mis- this is misogyny because nobody complained when Trump was breastfeeding during the state of the union address. That's true. Trump was, <laughs> She's got a nice rack. Um, she, says, she says here, so proud that my daughter, Aaliyah, is the first baby to be breastfed in the par- in the federal parliament. Yeah, she's going to love that in junior high school. Well, at least yeah. she's a gir- baby girl. Imagine if you're the first baby boy to suck oh. on your mom's titty in, in front of the world. <laughs> Guaranteed cuck. Cuck for sure, right? Yeah. <laughs> a dingo cuck. Cuck, 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 cuck. Still high science cuck. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's clip gotta get that guy on the show. Yeah, LA Werewolf Productions. Um, <laughs> she says that uh, she's so proud that her daughter was the first, the first baby to <laughs> to be breastfed on Parliament. We need more hashtag women and parents in Parth. Hashtag, hashtag Ospol. Water she's tweeted. hashtagging her hashtagging. She's hashtagging yeah. with her statement. She's tagging her hash. Anyway, hashtag Dingo Tit. Hashtag <sighs> Asshole. <sighs> dingo ate that titty. Um. Here's another headline. <laughs> Rucka, I want to talk to you about this. Oh, Man no. changes his name to Hitler. Yeah. Have you heard about this? I yeah, I think I saw this headline. Okay. Can okay. we can we what? can we finally call him a Nazi? Can we say this guy's a bona fide it Nazi? It sounds like he considers himself a Nazi. Okay. Yeah. So then he's a Nazi. I'm, I'm apparently the fucking Nazi defender here. No. He's <laughs> or like the unless the guy Nazi unless the, apologist. Unless the guy's an actual diagnosed paranoid schizophrenic, then he's a piece of shit. Okay, so I, I'm going to say he's a Nazi because we were having a debate on whether or not Richard Spencer is a Nazi because a while ago, that, that became kind of a, a call sign for the show. Callers call in, at the end of it, they say punch a Nazi. Uh, and so we had a debate a while back on whether or not you should punch Nazis. And then Absolutely. It, well, and th- that was a debate. You should actually listen to that uh, episode, Mark. It's episode number 34. I, I recommend anyone who hasn't heard I don't like podcasts. It. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was a uh, that debate episode number thirty four was a really good debate. We had uh, Mike D, our, our guest Mike D on, and I originally not brought, the Beastie Boy, not the Beastie Boy, unfortunately. Um, I originally brought in the topic thinking it'd be kind of lighthearted, and we just kind of fuck around and talk about Nazis getting punched. Punch like and Raiders kicked. of the Lost Ark Nazis, nope. not yeah. like Schindler's List Nazis. It was not. It was actually a very thoughtful debate. It's mm-hmm. one of the best episodes I think we uh, we recorded a while back. But probably uh, the least listened to, right? Because it's thoughtful. no, a lot of people listen oh, to wow. it. Awesome. Yeah, a lot of people. I I still get uh, messages about that episode. People listen to it over. And over again. This is from Hunter in New Jersey. A self-proclaimed Nazi official became Isidore Heath Hitler with a name change that took effect this week. According to mycentraljersey.com, Hitler's name change from Isidore Heath Campbell on Monday, the anniversary of the World War II end in Europe after Germany's surrender. He had requested to legally change his name in February. It's great, he says. My driver's license is changed over. My insurance, my registration, all that I need is changed over, he said. I'm the new Hitler. He said his initials are IHH, which stands for I Hail Hitler, and it's spelled wrong, and that gave, <laughs> that gave a prayer for the Nazis on the day his name officially changed. 
Now, this isn't the first time this guy's made news. He named his son Adolf Hitler, right? Yeah, listen to this. Here's a clip. That's actually what happened. Listen to this. The couple drew national attention when a supermarket refused to decorate a cake for their son, three-year-old Adolf Hitler Campbell. He and his siblings, Jocelyn Aryan Nation Campbell and Hans Lynn Hindler, G.N. Campbell, are in foster care. The Campbells say they aren't racist, just expressing their freedom to name their kids what they want. But you have swastikas on your hand. Um, let's see, India had that, China had it. I even have Chinese stuff up there. I even have a yin-yang. Uh -huh. right there. So you just like the way it looks? I like art. Yeah, it's he's art. not. So he's not racist, guys. He's an art he just fan. likes. He's an artist. Can we can we yeah. do, talk about one thing really quick? Yeah, I'm all for freedom of expression. This guy can tattoo. I love Hitler all over his face. But freedom of expression is not freedom from consequences. Right. Amen. You have to. If you're gonna do shit like that, you have to own it. Correct. And I don't mean to get all serious about that, but that's such bullshit. When these these people that want to oppress everyone else suddenly, when you call them on being fucking fascists and racist, yeah, like, you're trampling on my First Amendment rights. Well, you can't have it both ways, motherfuckers. Right. Like, Good luck getting a job, I Isidore Hitler. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just change the first name guy. Yeah, well, he doesn't need it anymore because I think a TV there was a TV show about him. Like uh, I think it was called Meet the Hitlers. Was that? Oh my god! Was that this? Yeah. So <laughs> there was a show called that. Meet the yeah. Meet the <laughs> no, there wasn't. <laughs> yeah, no. The, he, uh, for an, on it's AMC on Fox. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, this this guy that, uh, was part of the show. I think his his whole family. There were a bunch of you know he called it, he named everyone someone from the. Nazi regime. And by the way, yeah, I'm I'm 100% with you, Mark. When you guys get called out for this shit, don't be fucking cowards about it. You're you're saying these ugly things. Stand behind it. Don't or don't fucking say it. Nobody what? everybody wants to say racist shit, but no one wants the reputation of being racist and no one wants to have the consequences of being racist. Well, it's like when people say I'm not this, but I'm not an asshole, but I'm not trying to be a dick, but I'm not but. trying to be a you well you actually are. That doesn't magically mean you're not. That me puts right. in Big neon letters. Oh, you're going to say something really shitty right now. I'm okay. not racist, but here's those something people. racist. Like, yeah, fuck those you. I'm so fucking tired of it. Look, say what you want, but just fucking stand behind it. Yeah, you have to own what you say. I just wrote an article about this, about trolling. Because mm -hmm. I feel like trolling today is the modern version of uh, just a prank, bro, or just kidding. It's not. It's no. not an undo button for your shitty behavior. No, when I'm president of the world... You will not be able to post anything on the internet that doesn't have your real name. I have never in the history of being on the internet posted anything under anything but my real name. I've never wow. said anything I wouldn't say to you if you weren't sitting across from me. And if you can't, if you think about that before you type something in, if you wouldn't say that to the person you're talking about, if they were sitting across from you, then don't fucking do it because you're a coward. That'd be crazy in the future if in order to have a login or anything, Thumbprint. you had to verify your, identity. your existence. Well, so I do notice that on forums where people are anonymous the comments are generally shittier like youtube versus facebook everybody knows everybody it's mostly a real id so it's a little bit more uh, well not tempered. anymore there are so many i posted some stuff about uh, the current uh regime that's occupying our government and you get all sorts of fake responses from people like they're like pro him where you go to their profile and there's no pictures oh. and it's a name there there's a whole there's whole companies that make money generating fake profiles that look for buzzwords to go troll that's an industry now. The people that come up with a way to monetize trolling, why don't you work on like making a flying car or curing cancer or something? We waste so much money on being dickheads that if we just focused at 10% of it on doing something progressive, not only would you be helping the world, but you'd probably be a millionaire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, it, it, it seems Except like an opportunity. Gandhi, he was a dick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I took a class years ago in Detroit, uh, like a stand-up comedy. I thought like, you know, I'm... I'm trying to learn some shit. Like the teacher was like a stand-up comic named Bill. And uh, so he would just have us go up there and like try test out our material and he would give us notes. So I got up there and said one of my things. I said like, I'm not racist. And then he jumps in, but I'm about to say something racist. And I said, yeah. He goes, okay. You never call your, you never make about you. Oh, say you have a friend. I got this friend. He's like, he's kind of racist. <laughs> so I said, okay, I got this friend, Bill. He's kind of racist. And Kind of made him the the racist friend. Oh, the the, the, the professor. Yeah. Himself? Oh, that's funny. How did he take professor, that? Professor, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Well, he thought it was funny, but uh, my point he was, was racist. Uh, evidently, yeah. I mean, I do believe <laughs> you can say uh, things that are racist, things that are sexist, occasionally, and not necessarily that be your person, your entire personality, and or define you, because everybody uh, sometimes slips up and they they say things that are off color or whatever. Uh, and then well, sometimes you, people don't know. We live in such PC times now that it's like when I misidentified you as not as Greek instead of Armenian. Yeah. We're in such PC times now that I'm sure people can be like, "Well, that's racist because Greeks and Armenians are different." Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, "Well, no, it was just it was just 
ignorance. It wasn't racism, you sure. know, and you can also tell jokes too. I mean, sure. jokes in context. I mean, people, once again, it goes back to people being so literal. They take everything at face value. Yeah. Well, um, I, I think it's high time that, uh, that people stand up, stand behind these, these shitty opinions. Like this guy has swastikas tattooed on his fucking neck and arm. And then he's, he's even backing down. And you know who else is? The fucking uh, KKK, the Ku Klux Klan. They said, we don't want to be called racist anymore. They said, we're, wh- we're white nationalists. You guys are the de facto racists. Can we just, is there anyone we can call racist? We can't call anyone racist. Anymore? Who the fuck is racist? Can, uh, you can't call KKK racist. You can't call the guy with a, a fucking, you can't call Hitler racist. You can't call Hitler racist. This is the world we're living in. Is that true? You can't call he's Hitler. He's Hitler. He said he's Hitler. It's liter- okay, literally. He's li- literally. Okay, literally. Literally Hitler. You yeah. can't call him, you can't but, call literal Hitler. But he said, I like art. <laughs> I like art. art. art Well, the Chinese did it, and the Buddhists did it. It's like dipshit. You're not a fucking Zen. I got some Chinese over there. Yeah, it's you're not you're not you're not appreciating the art the aesthetic of the swastika. And by the way, you can without putting out. No, that's such a bullshit argument, dude. What a fucking cop out. Anyway, well, you're freaking out because a bunch of inbred white guys have a special request for how they'd like to be treated, and they're called Congress. What are you saying? Well, like, in a time when everyone is offended by everything, now the fucking hillbillies are joining yeah. the party, and you're freaking out about it. No, it, it because is... it's the same bullshit we've been seeing from everybody. Yeah, I want to know what your joke was at that class. You know what? Here, okay, I went in. I went to the strip club in in the hood, and racist. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this <laughs> is actually true. This is actually true. I went to a strip club. Uh, I was like 22 or something, and uh, with my friends and. There was a, it was it was kind of the rougher side of town. There was a sign on the wall that said, "No, no hats, no no colors, no exceptions." Obviously, oh. well, Maddox, what is what do they mean by no colors? No, okay, I see where you're. No, going I'm with. asking you a question because I know you're out of touch with with the hood. So what what did they mean by no colors? Gang colors. Okay, all right. Yeah. Just ask. Colors. Yeah. So uh, the joke that I said was so I so the, the the sign was real. So in the joke I told in to the class, I said. Uh, and so I walked up to the bouncer and I said, what kind of sign is this? How could you say no colors? And he said, oh, no, no, no. We don't. We just mean no gang colors. Right. We're, we're trying to keep the thugs out. And I said, I knew you hate black people. <laughs> I, thought you were, I thought you were going to go with you thought the sign said no colors. Right. Well, I think that that's was what he was the implying. That yeah, was the joke. Implying, I mean, yeah. yeah. So, All right. yeah. You so, you didn't, so you didn't pass the class? I, didn't. <laughs> I did not we, use that joke again. So so we just found out last week, Mark, <laughs> that uh, Rucka, Rucka's a uh, 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 community college dropout. Yeah. Mikey's a community college dropout. No, mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm a college dr- after community oh. college. Oh, after community. Okay, so, so I actually dro- wasted more time than yeah. Mark. And more money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, and, and then out. our guest last week also dropped out of community college. And I am the foremost academic on the show because I, I'm... One test away from graduating. Never graduated. But one test, pretty close. Pretty close. That means I am the foremost academic on the show. Not today, you're not. Yeah. uh, Wait, did you graduate? Yeah, I graduated with honors. I have a BA in theater and directing. All right, we're going to cut all this out. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Mark, thank you for joining us. Is there anything you'd like to plug before we wrap this up? Uh, Nope, nope. Just uh, if people weren't totally offended by how angry I got this episode, please go to Amazon.com or your local comic book store and buy a copy of Love is Love because I'm actually about love, not as hate hate like I was today. (laughs) I've Uh, known Mark for a long time now, and uh, this is like... Not even the closest I've seen ever. And, and we're gonna we're gonna start a GoFundMe page to send Ruck out of comedy school. Yeah, there we go. Thank you so much for joining us, Mark. Check it out. Love is love. I'll link to it on the website. It's a it's for a good cause. The anniversary is coming up. And if you're in Florida, May 26th, come to the uh, come to the cocktail party. It'll be super fun. And what's it called again? Uh, Megacon in Megacon. Orlando. Megacon. All right. Thank you very much, Mark and Draco. Thank you to my first hand on staff moderator, Rucka Rucka Ali. Yep. Thank you to Mikey Bolts. Thank you, Swagmaster. But most of all, you're welcome. Dude, Maddox, I'm so glad that you had Jesse from Pot Awful on last week's episode because it reminds me of this story that my grandma's friend told me that one time she walked in on her friend or her husband getting a blowjob from Jesse from Pot Awful. And they ended up getting a divorce. How fucking crazy is that? You should ask them about that. Huh. Interesting. And maybe I will ask him about that. Interesting. Jesse from Pot Awful getting a giving a blowjob. Um, here's another caller. This is a this is a first time caller, actually. I like to play these sometimes. Listen to this guy. 
Hey, I'm a first time caller. I just wanted to call and say that, uh, uh, fuck. <laughs> Great first time call. And here's one last one from Weird Matthew McConaughey, because last week I mentioned that uh, I'm a samurai in the sheets. Uh, so <laughs> here's, uh, here's Weird Matthew. You're a samurai in the sheets because no one even knows you were there. They're just like, oh, I was masturbating, and then I turned the lights on, and I was covered in hair. Yeah, wrong, <laughs> Weird Matthew. You're thinking of ninjas. Ninjas are the ones you don't know are there. You always know when I'm there. And did he say covered in hair? Yeah. I'm Armenian. Oh, I was going to say, because most Asians are very yeah. smooth. Yeah, you got two facts wrong about ninjas and samurais. Weird and ninjas Matthew. are Japanese, aren't they? Nin- uh, samurais are, are Japanese, Japanese too. too, yeah. They're both Japanese. But the ninjas ninjas are the, are the weak ones. Ninjas the, are the creeps. I don't know about... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're creeps. They're they'll, still, they'll both kick your ass. What, ninjas and samurais? I think so. Not Maddox's ass. Not mine. He's going to no. kick it. It's protected by your, hair. Gonna this, kick, are you going to kick your own ass? I'm not going to kick my own ass, you guys. Come on. <laughs> Samurai's never kicked their own ass. Hey there. Don't forget to subscribe to Madcast Shows on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. Okay, bye. Madcast Media Network. <laughs>